Hi, one of the most important bits of kit that you can have apart from your multimeter and your oscilloscope in any good electronics lab is an LCR meter. And LCR of course stands for L's for inductor, C for capacitance, R for resistance. Sure, your regular multimeter can measure resistance, but you know, and it can kind of sort of do capacitance, it's okay. Rarely will you get a multimeter that'll measure inductance. Multimeters are a fairly crude tool for the job, so an LCR meter does this better with more capability in terms of uh, like all the different parameters you can measure. It can measure over different frequencies. It can measure uh, different parameters like capacitor, your quality factor, your dissipation factor, your equivalent series resistance, and all this sort of stuff. And uh, they're really handy. Often they come with uh, terminals like this, and they're great for you know you just whack your component in there like that. And often they'll have like automatic measurement ranges. So if you don't know whether it's an inductor, resistor, or capacitor that you're actually measuring, the LCR meter can actually tell you as well as give you other parameters. So they're really handy bits of kit. Um, and of course like a big uh, LCR meter like this, relatively expensive, you know, many hundreds of dollars, but you can actually get, you know, pretty decent ones for under a hundred bucks now. So there's really no excuse for having one in your lab. But the problem is, they're big like this. It's yet another big instrument. Unless you're using it every day, it's just going to get in the way. And it's really only suitable for like uh, through hole parts like this. Because if you want to measure uh, surface mount stuff, you can get like an adapter that actually plugs in here and you can kind of get your tweezers and put your little surface mount part on there and try and hold it down and things like that. Or you can plug in some probes and bloody auto pair off. You can plug in some probes and you can measure your surface mount parts like you've got down here. And even with really really fine probes like this, it can be a little bit tricky. You've got to use both hands like this. You've got to get in there. And of course, you know, if you're having a bad day with Murphy, the part will just flip and it'll just vanish. And ah, oh, like it'll ruin your day if you don't apply like equal pressure on either side. And these are ultra miniature probes, uh, you know, very expensive uh, from Fluke. And we can get in there, this resistor down here, for example. But if I accidentally put the wrong pressure, my hand slips or whatever, don't have my tongue at the right angle, that part can just flip off and it'll land on the carpet and ah, you'll never see the damn thing again. And there's an easier way to do this. It's with one of these uh, tweezer type LCR meters. And you've seen this on the blog before. This is the Smart Tweezers uh, from a, a Canadian uh, company. And it works really well. The form factor with the tweezers like this, it just, you know, it's just really nice. And it can give you all the other parameters and stuff like that. There's the resistor. But if we measure our capacitor here, it'll tell us our equivalent series resistance. Uh, it'll tell us the frequency we're measuring at one kilohertz. Just really nice and just the form factor usability like this. There's no leads going around because if you, you know, have leads on your bench then they'll just like flick off parts and things like that. Just really annoying. Get in the way. Lose all your surface mount parts. Ruin your day. So these surface mount tweezers are much better. So these ones I've uh, reviewed before and they have released a more advanced model but these are actually quite expensive. They're like even on special they're like 200 70 bucks or something. So we've now got a much more reasonably priced solution for you. Ta-da! Here it is. This is the Miniware um, E-Design DT71. Look at this little bad boy. And it's uh, priced at under 80 US dollars delivered from AliExpress. I'll link it in down below. And it's a really nice bit of kit. And watch this. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Fantastic. It's This is the measurement head with a little um, 90 by 16 OLED display, little uh, 3.5 millimeter TRS jack, and there's a little battery inside the these smart tweezers like this. It's got replaceable tips, all for 80 bucks. Unbelievable. And you'll notice that the screen will automatically flip like this if you go from your right hand over to left hand, it'll automatically sense that and flip. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. And the design and build quality of this thing is really quite remarkable. One of the neat things is that inside here, there's actually magnets there and there. And also inside here, there's a magnet in here that actually is supposed to attract these two together. And these ones actually uh, repel apart. So it actually gives a, a really gorgeous feel on these. And there's almost 
no effort required. Absolutely fantastic. They were really thinking. Um, these ones here are just like sprung metal and it's like, uh, you know, look at the width they can get on these compared to these ones here and the feel is just absolutely gorgeous. I wish this was feel -a vision Now you've no doubt heard of Miniware because they're the uh, company behind the TS100 and TS80 portable soldering irons uh, along with uh, they've got like portable power supplies and lots of other uh, like uh, you know portable oscilloscope uh, thing and stuff like that that they've, they've got these days and this is their latest product is just been released and for under $80 delivered for a pair of LCR tweezers like this, especially with like you know, really nice uh, design refinements in it, is really remarkable. So this measurement head here, it just plugs in there like that and switches on. I've updated the latest firmware, I might talk about that later. And it's automatically gone into resistance mode there, but you'll notice that there's no switch on this thing. It's just got a touch on the end. So if you touch it, it changes modes. D is diode mode, so resistance mode, diode mode, a capacitance mode, inductance mode, and uh, a frequency mode as well. It'll actually output um, signals as well, which I, uh, possibly a bit gimmicky. I don't know why you'd want to use, but anyway, it does actually have an arbitrary function generator, which we might look at, and it can actually, it's got a voltmeter as well. It can measure in two ranges um, up to 40 volts. Anyway, let's switch it to capacitance mode, and there we have it, 19.7 nanofarads. And then if we just hold down that button for a bit, it goes into identify mode, which will then auto identify our parts. So that'll know that's a capacitor, that'll know that's a resistor, and I should have had an inductor here handy, but it will do inductors too. There we go, one micro Henry, no worries. So this is really a very essential tool for working with any SMD component, especially in uh, production or your, uh, you know, select on test before you put in and things like that. Although if you go in for like select on test and absolute accuracy, a more expensive and uh, more accurate one like the um, smart tweezers from advanced devices comes with a calibration uh, certificate. It's, you know, it's going to be more accurate. It's going to have wider measurement ranges and stuff like that. So, you know, but this is like vastly more expensive than this little bad boy at 80 bucks delivered. Just so handy to have. There's probably no excuse for not having an LCR uh, tweezer. Yes, you can of course get uh, tweezer attachments that uh, plug into your big bench LCR meter like this. But as I said, like you know, just having the like cables go across the bench, you can just brush off all of your parts and you just cannot beat the convenience of these little tweezer LCR meters. And this one is just the design of it is absolutely brilliant but it's not all roses so let's talk about the pros and cons so to switch this on you don't actually use uh, the button at the back here you actually just touch the tweezers like that and it turns on very nice it just goes into a deep sleep mode I'm not sure how long the battery is going to last in like that standby mode I can't get in there to actually uh, well maybe I could measure it but I'd have to bodge up like a lead and stuff like that anyway I did actually have this go flat on me uh, just I've actually had this for quite some time I was waiting for it to be released uh, before I did this video and it did actually um, lose charge so I'm not sure how long it lasts in standby but in operation it's supposed to do 10 hours or operation it's supposed to take uh, two hours to recharge i'll show you the recharging uh system in a minute and uh yeah to turn on just hit that very nice and to go into settings uh you can just hold down uh the touch button at the back of it now one of the uh, downsides of this is it doesn't really have the resolution of the advanced devices up here look at this short this out when we're talking like you know 20 milliohms with like 10 microohms resolution. I don't think it quite has that, but resolution is absolutely phenomenal. Do the same with the DT71 and you're talking 0.1 ohm resolution. So it's not terrific. So the ranges just aren't as good uh, as this one here. We're talking uh, for resistance 0.1 ohms to 2 meg at plus minus 0.5% uh, plus 2 digits. Uh, and capacitance, you can see there, it's only got uh, 0.1 puff resolution there, up to 400 microfarads. So 
not good if you want to measure big caps. Can't go do any more than 400 microfarads. Uh, it'll do all capacitors at uh, 2% uh, plus two digits. So that's, you know, good enough for Australia. Uh, and then inductance, you're talking one microhenry to uh, 50 millihenries at 5% uh, plus three digits. And resolution there, I'm measuring a one microhenry inductor and well, yeah, you can't get really any lower than that. But the miniware job here, it'll go to a nano Henry range. Look at that. Absolutely remarkable. And of course, it gives you the extra information. It gives you the equivalent series resistance. There you go. Uh, 96 milliohms there. So uh, it'll do that for capacitors as well. If we go into auto set mode there, of course, we can measure our capacitor and it'll give you the equivalent series resistance. There you go, uh, 200 ohms at one kilohertz. And that's the thing uh, with the miniware, you're only gonna get this tiny little one screen. With the miniware, it literally is just an LCR meter. It won't give you any of the extra parameters uh, that you'll get on a proper uh, like handheld LCR meter or the smart tweezers here. Um, so you can't get equivalent series resistance and all that sort of jazz. It just, it's not designed for that. It's just basic LCR and R measurement, plus some extra features like uh, doing diodes and it's got signal generation, can measure voltages and stuff like that. But, yeah, it's just not as flexible, but hey, for the price, it's still awesome. So yeah, that's one of my criticisms is that uh, the display is just like too small. Yeah, you know, like you can still read it. The OLED's quite uh, readable, but it is a pretty small display. And the other thing is, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get this, but look, it flips. If I use the uh, tweezers like that and I don't, and I have it tilted there, it's flipped. Like... I think the positional sensor is just not calibrated well enough. Yes, it works left to right hand, but just using it like that, if you're if I'm standing directly over my bench like this and it just it just it flips at the wrong inconvenient point. Yeah, it just needs a bit of refinement in the um sensing of the angle there. Now, unfortunately, uh, the readings have been a bit over the shop. Here, this is reading 33.1. This is bang on 33K uh, resistor as measured with a uh, accurate multimeter. And but I've seen like uh, you know 32.5 and things like that. I aha, check it out. I put it into automatic mode. Same resistor measuring 32.5K. So something's wrong. So if I actually put that back into manual mode, it's kind of annoying to get it into manual mode. You've got to like go through a few things and bingo we're back in manual mode resistance 33.1 watch this i'll put oh, i'll put it into automatic mode or i identify mode as it's called at 32.5 k why the difference that is a massive difference in readings between automatic and manual mode why um that doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me so yeah, this doesn't seem to be like a real uh, precision measurement bit of kit. It's not a go no go tester, but um, yeah, it's it's accuracy uh, repeatability seems to leave a bit to be desired. So I wouldn't recommend this as your only LCR meter uh, for the lab. You know, get a good handheld one with you know decent accuracy. And in automatic mode, I uh, hook, got it hooked up to my uh, decade resistance box with a one meg, and it says well, it's a nine picofarad capacitor with a one meg, it is giving us the secondary parameter now, but um, yeah, that's clearly a resistor instead of a capacitor. So yeah, maybe the uh, detection algorithm leaves a bit to be desired. So that's two meg, three, four, five. Oh, and it's vanished there. It's vanished at uh, eight meg there. Ah, uh, there we go. It thinks that is now a hundred K. Okay, with uh, seven puff. Oh, and you go to 200k, and it, then it, it thinks it's uh, a main, primarily a capacitor. Yeah, 100 and 200k. There you go. I can get that to switch. So that's interesting. 10k. Of course, it's not going to give us any secondary parameter because the the resistances are swamping any capacitance. Well, why did that reboot? Didn't want that to reboot. And 100 ohm, 99.4. Let's put it in automatic mode. 99.4, it's the same. So we're not seeing any discrepancy there, but yeah, there's probably like some non-linearity between automatic and measurement mode because we saw the error before. And if you put on a large uh, thousand mic cap, which is over its uh, recommended spec of uh, 
400. This is in auto detection mode, jumping between diode and <laughs> 1.3K. That'd be based on the uh, test frequency, of course. Now, if we put it in manual capacitance mode, hook it up to a scope, we can actually see the, uh, <laughs> the scope probe capacitance. That's times 10 range. And that's, of course, times one range extra capacitance. Done a whole video on that of why you get a lower bandwidth in times one. Anyway, you can see there, that's 100 milliseconds per division, like 150 millisecond uh, burst at one frequency, and, well, at one level, and then another one. So if we single shot capture that, should be able to zoom in. Oh, no, it doesn't have the resolution there. Move that across. We're talking 838 kilohertz. Why would you measure capacitance at 838 kilohertz? Like 100 kilohertz is standard. Why? And that's 530. So it goes from this uh, sort of like triangular, well, you can see it charging, sort of you know, charge and then discharge. And this section over here is a different wave shape again. So I'm not sure what the deal is. Are they basing, I'm not sure if they're basing this architecture on that, uh, you know, that five ten dollar LCR meter I've done, that cheap one, um, using the, is it like an Atmel processor or something like that, whether or not they've actually based it uh, on that, I'm not sure. Oh, it switched off. So anyway, this is the resistance mode there. You can see a little wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah, once again, this is like with no load. It's just like the, and this is the diode mode. It's, I've just got the probe capacitance on there. So diode mode and resistance look the same. And then we've got our capacitance mode with our two different levels. And then I'm going to switch to inductance mode. We don't get the two levels, but it looks like there's two different frequencies in there. No, it's just pulsating. There you go. Look at that. That's in indu inductance mode. <laughs> between a square wave and then it's charge discharge kind of thing hmm and this is in auto identify mode jumping through a whole bunch of different modes there isn't it so we saw that yeah it's basically that's just a combination of all the modes that we saw there uh, we saw that for like the uh, resistance and diode modes we saw this one for the the different amplitudes for the capacitance and then we saw uh well potentially in there for the inductance so it is looks like, cycling through it's uh it's different modes like that at uh, you know 100 milliseconds per division so you can you know calculate a couple hundred milliseconds uh for each mode that it's uh testing there what 150 milliseconds something like that and there's uh, noise generation mode, uh, 0.1 megahertz. That's just generating some random noise. Look, I don't care about the signal generation capability of this, even though it's got a little mini 100-point ARB gen. I don't know why you'd really need it. Maybe there's a niche use and it might be useful for you. And as for uh, diode mode for lighting up LEDs, I wouldn't get that excited. It's 2 milliamps. It's going to be enough to light up a uh, LED, but... Uh, like uh, one of its useful features, of course, uh, is to light up LEDs already populated on a board. So if you're doing massive like LED array uh, boards and things like that to check individual LEDs, um, this could be really quite handy. So it'll light them up enough to see them. So here's a microcurrent LED. It's one of these reverse mount ones. So it's actually emitting on the other side, but you can see that it's flishy flashing there. But unfortunately, if you get the polarity wrong, you're going to get zippity doo -dah. Would have been nice to like, uh, you know, actually reverse that. That would have been really good. But unfortunately, you can't. Uh, so you got to get the right polarity. But I do like that it actually flashes a LED like that. And, you know, it's a reasonable brightness. So just, you know, imagine if you had a board just populated with, you know, tons of LEDs like this. Going along and just testing each one. Ah, that's worth its weight in gold. And pro tip, you don't actually have to have it in diode mode to test your <laughs> diodes or your LEDs. It works in resistance and capacitance mode too. And capacitance flashes slower. <laughs> Just measure a larger inductor there, 104 microhenries, but it doesn't give us any extra, uh, d well, it gives us no decimal place on there. And the smart tweezers, 94.13 microhenries. That's at 10 kilohertz. That's the thing. You can actually select different frequencies to measure it. And at 1 kilohertz, 94.23. Whoa, 96 mic point one microhenries, but we've got the leads as well, but you know, meh. So unfortunately, this is significantly over there. 104 microhenries. Oh, hang on. It did actually flash something, a secondary series resistance down there. Oh, 1.6 ohms. Did you see that? 
466k, is there a secondary parameter? I didn't think there was. See if I can get, oh, there we go, 96 ohms. You saw it pop up there briefly. I'm not sure what the deal is there. Is that trying to measure the ESR of that inductor the same time? But it goes away, it only comes up sometimes, oh, 2.4 ohms, and then it vanishes. Anyway, it does have a calibration mode that you can enter, so we can actually close the tips like that. Keep closed, open tips please, keep open, boom, oh, save data, yes please, and it's now calibrated. But it does have a more advanced calibration feature where you can actually go in, plug it into the PC and actually, uh, you know, edit the calibration file yourself. And it gives you this information in the manual, which is great. So technically, although this red significantly different, it is technically within the uh, 5% plus three digits. And you've got to remember the plus three digits matter when you don't have any um, a decimal place in there. So not only, you know, that's like, let's say it's a hundred microhenries spot on, that's its absolute value, then, uh, okay, it's reading 4% over, but it's also plus three digits spec. So it could actually be, could be 105 plus three digits. So it could be 108 or basically 92 microhenries to 108 microhenries. So yeah, this is not designed for uh, precision work. As I said, it's, it's well, it's not a go no go. It'll give you the value, but yeah, if you want accurate measurements and stuff, this is not going to replace a hand a proper high quality handheld LCR meter. Now, if you put it into auto identify mode, it's not going to identify a voltage, unfortunately, <laughs> zero ohms. <laughs> yeah. So we'll put it into voltage mode here, and well, neg negative. It can't measure negative voltages. Anyway, it does have a maximum spec of minus five volts, even though it does have a positive spec. Oh, there we go, 3.03. .03. I do believe that is correct. I've measured that with a multimeter. So, you know, it's pretty good, but I like, okay, you can measure voltages with it if it's the right polarity, but you can't do it if it's the negative polarity. I, I don't know, a bit of a gimmick. Maybe there's some niche use for it. Time, it can generate noise. Like, why? What is, what's the value in this, apart from some marketing wankery on the brochure sheet? And anyway, it does have an arbitrary waveform, which you can actually edit when you hook this up to the PC, and uh, you can actually edit up to 100 points in, like, a, a text file. Um, it's, like, it's really quite neat and all this. Anyway, um, and, but yeah, if you want to get out into calibration mode, out of calibration mode back, you hold that down, you're in M for manual mode, and as I said, hold it down, you're going to identify, which has uh, got A for auto mode, and then you can hold it down and you're in uh, SIG Gen setup and things like that. So, uh, you know, it's fairly intuitive to use uh, the button on the back. I have accidentally, like, pressed it uh, once or two, not pressed it, but, you know, touched it because it's a, uh, it's basically a capacitive uh, touch sensor. And the probes here, they do have the polarity. So uh, red is positive, blue, that's that European thing for negative. And you can see you can actually replace the tips. So you can just unscrew them there and get replacement tips on this thing, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, you might think, how do you charge this thing? Well, it actually comes with, ta-da, a charging and USB-C data connection cable. So you actually plug that in there like that. You can see that there's a little LED on there and you plug this into here. So unfortunately, you can't still use it in that mode and you can't use it while it's being charged. Bummer. And if we plug in a power pack there, bingo, the LED, Trust me, that's on. Oh, there you go. From this angle, it's better. Look at that. Straight on. Hopeless. What the, what's the deal with that light pipey thing? Oh, that's a hopeless light pipe. This is bizarre. Check it out. Straight on. Nothing. On the edge, like that. You can really see it. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> unbelievable. So while it's charging, it tells you the DFU version number, which is different to your firmware version number, and your input voltage, which is uh, kind of nice, but unfortunately, um, it doesn't work while you're charging. So this is one of the downsides of this thing, is that uh, if you sit on the bench and it, it happens not to be charged when you need this thing, then that's really annoying. Like, it can take two hours to charge. It might only take, like, five minutes to get enough juice for a couple of measurements or something. But, yeah, I don't know. I can't get the help... But feeling they've put so much effort into the design of this thing. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love the feather touch. 
tweezers on it with the attention to detail with the magnets in there and the beautiful wide measurement range, the interchangeable tips. I love how it like auto changes between left and right hand mode and it's just, you know, it, it's really fantastically designed but I can't help but think if they just made the head a bit bigger, put a larger screen on it, measure some secondary parameters and maybe even power it from like a AAA cell. I know why they put the battery uh, down here. It's supposedly because it's balanced like that. Look at that. The weight is nicely balanced so it doesn't feel like it's like really heavy so if you're using it for long uh, durations or something like that you're doing production binning uh, you know things like that then yeah, th that could be really nice whereas the smart tweezers here yeah they've got like this er ergonomic divot thing in there but it does sort of feel a bit top heavy like that but I can't help but think what a nice one with like a single triple A cell in it or something would have been like I know it would have been a bit top heavy but ah oh, maybe I would have sacrificed that but I don't know some people are fans of the USB rechargeable thing and if you lose your lead like you're screwed right <laughs> there's nothing you can do but herein lies the problem if you have to actually plug this uh, lead in every time to charge this thing up and uh, it doesn't work with the uh, lead in place then well you have to like do this, let's say you used it, you know, a couple of times a week or something like that, then you've got to plug and unplug this thing and I've got to question the longevity of, you know, such a 3.5 millimeter TRS uh, jack system just being plugged and unplugged uh, continuously if you used it a lot. So yeah, it may not be the best uh, solution from a reliability standpoint. So uh, lucky it's cheap, I guess. Um, but if you only use it occasionally, I you know it's going to last a long time. But it's just uh, it's it's not as nice if it had some other charging uh, solution. Like they've already uh, you know, integrated magnets into the solution, so like they could have had some sort of like external uh, magnetic charging, you know, external contact charging solution or something like that or just regular USB charging or something like that or just like a simply a replaceable like AAA cell on the end or something but yeah I yeah reliability could be an issue and as I said uh, the firmware update on this was uh, pretty seamless I won't show you but you basically just uh, plug in your USB cable here it appears as a uh, drive on your computer and you just um, drag the uh, um, hex file into the directory and it automatically renames it to what it needs and then you repair it and it, it it didn't even tell me maybe I blinked and missed it didn't even tell me it was updating the uh, firmware in the thing and it just did it um, but anyway yeah I've updated to uh, the latest version and yeah that was dead easy so the verdict on the uh, miniware slash e-design because uh, e-design is the company apparently miniware is their brand uh, the DT71 tweezers well I absolutely love the engineering on this thing it's absolutely fantastic but yeah it's like it's a bare bones LCR meter I wouldn't recommend it probably is your only LCR meter you should have like a proper like handheld or bench uh, LCR meter for doing you know more precision work this is not a precision device doesn't have the range doesn't have the resolution um, and doesn't have the accuracy to you know really be a top-notch LCR meter but damn it's handy and the price point at under 80 US bucks delivered absolutely fantastic and the tweezer design is just brilliant on it so there's really no excuse for any decently equipped lab now not to have a pair of handy little LCR uh, tweezers like this because as I said like surface mount stuff like this like tiny little parts which don't have the value marked on them and you want to like <laughs> <laughs> try and measure these things using your traditional probes and things uh, it's just it's not worth the hassle these tweezer things are worth their weight in gold they're absolutely fantastic so it's it's a novel little toy at a great price point there's absolutely nothing that can touch it so well worth having but just don't expect you know fantastic performance out of it. it doesn't measure the secondary parameters and things like that but if you're like just out after some basic values measuring uh smd parts then 
yeah, uh, it's it's hard to beat for the price point. I'll link to uh, the AliExpress store to buy it down below. So if you like that video, please give it a big a thumbs up. And as always, discuss it down below. Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.